Good morning and welcome to this webinar on Delivering for Doll, the project behind how Jersey went wild for gorillas. I'm Ed Smith from the APM Channel Islands Committee and I'll be hosting today. So in the Channel Islands we face much the same challenges as, as all project managers. And as such, the APM Channel Islands branch, we're committed to improving both quality and understanding project management across both the islands of Guernsey and Jersey. We've had many interesting projects here in the Channel Islands. We're proud today to bring you one of the more exciting ones. So a bit of admin before we start. Please be aware that this webinar has been recorded and you're in uh, listen-only mode. The session will last for about 60 minutes, and that's about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes of presentation with a Q&A at the end. So please submit your questions via the chat or via the question panel, and we'll respond at, at the end. Following the webinar, the recording will be uploaded onto the APM YouTube account and the slides will be put on the APM SlideShare account, both of which will be on the branch community page on the APM website. So that'll be in about five days' time. And finally, the session will count towards your CPD. So today we're joined by Beth Galishon to talk about the gorillas at uh, Dole, the Jersey Zoo. So Beth worked in fundraising for the last 10 years and being with Dull for the last three. So she leads a team focused on the, the Dull fundraising events and support comms. So without further to do, over to you, Beth. Hi there, thanks so much for having me to join you today. Um, um, this is the second time I've spoken about Go Wild Gorillas, a, a project that we ran in, um, that culminated in 2019. Um, but I'm really sort of pleased if there's, if there's anything um, that um, I've got the opportunity to share this over a webinar format as well. Um, it's been an, a really fascinating project um, for Daryl uh, and for me uh, and my career. Um, and um, it's um, although we, I'm a fundraiser by trade, um, I do think that project management is involved in everything that I do. Um, and uh, I feel very lucky to work for for Durrell as a as an organisation. I'm privileged to to run this project. Um, so. I'm actually um, broadcasting from Jersey Zoo today. Um, lucky um, the snow has cleared a little bit and we had some flutter of snow and uh, the sun is shining. Um, but I'm also very lucky uh, to work for an international conservation organisation that has been established for over 60 years. Um, and um, for anyone who doesn't know who Gerald Durrell is, he um, was a famous author. Um, and a uh, conservationist and uh, he wrote My Family and Other Animals which actually initially funded his uh, project uh, which was to, to, to start a zoo um, with a focus on, um, on saving species from extinction. Um, so um, personally I've also organised other projects such as um, festivals in Jersey and the Broncos Film Festival, um, but this by far is the most successful fundraising project I've worked on. Um, and um, of course it's not just uh, it's not just the, uh, the start, it's the start of a bigger project um, in Jersey here to replace um, the gorillas enclosure um, for our family of gorillas here when the, the building was built 40 years ago, so this was a fundraiser for that. And um, and um, and obviously um, it's helped also to inspire some other projects which um, we'll be running in the future. So thank you so much for joining me. So I'd like also to thank Catherine, Rob, and Ed for bearing with me with the technology. I've got a couple of videos to show during this presentation, but hopefully it will all run smoothly. So, um, firstly, I'd like to give you a bit of an introduction to Durrell. Um, this is um, Carl Jones pictured here, and he is um, one of our, um, he's our chief scientist at Durrell. Um, we're very proud um, at Durrell to have, um, have these incredible um, ambassadors for us. And um, Carl was one of uh, Gerald Durrell's protégés and um, is still employed by us and we re re recently launched the Carl Jones Scholarship. Um, but um, Go Wild Gorillas was a, um, 
a fundraising event that was to celebrate our 60th anniversary of um, the Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust. And um, just to give you an overview of what's been achieved, it's really incredible um, um, that um, Durrell has been at the forefront of conservation and in fact is often recognised as, um, as delivering significant change and uh, especially for an organisation of its size. Um, certainly um, Carl Jones has been recognised as saving the most species as an individual and that is, um, and that is something that Doral is super proud of. So um, I wanted to give you a bit of an overview of um, Doral's um, strategy um, to rewild our world and um, this was a strategy that's been coming up um, basically being put together by our uh, conservationists and all of us um, that work within Durrell um, to actually come up with some really ambitious goals by 2025. So um, the focus is actually on conservation and we're looking at um, how not only we're going to be able to use the zoo but our expertise to actually look at a concept which we you may have heard of which is called rewilding. Um, and rewilding is really about um, um, certain elements, but it's about um, rewilding species and e ecosystems as well as um, people and places. So how are we going to achieve that? So uh, we want to restore the wonderful colour of the planet. We're going to look at uh, recovering threatened or missing species. Um, reviving and rebuilding ecosystems and natural processes reconnecting people to nature and uh, taking responsibility and as a scientific organization um, we have come up with a theory of change and this is really um, how we have um, come up with our goals and um, it's really integral to us as a scientific organization that we we look at this and it's really to give you a bit of background about the go wild gorillas project so we have our three core um, foundations, which is the zoo, um, our conservation training, where we've trained um, conservationists from all over the world um, and giving them the development here at Jersey Zoo, um, whether that's in person or online. And then we have our conservation rewilding sites around the world. So we are specialists in breeding uh, at the zoo and teaching those skills so that we can recover populations of species and animals. Um, and um, these are our targets that we want to achieve by 2025. So we set ourselves some specific targets. Um, that is um, 500 endangered species, projects working more effectively. And that's how it um, is focused around our conservation training. Um, at our rewilding sites, we're looking at identifying 10 ecosystems across the world that we'll focus on. Um, and within the, at those ecosystems, looking at 100 threatened species on the road to recovery. Um, and really the core one for us and, and what our Go Wild Gorillas um, really focused on is this, one million people better connected to nature. So what does connected better, one million people better connected to nature is? So nature connection is um, how integrated an individual feels with the nature around them. And we know that people who are better connected to nature are more likely to be predisposed to conservation practices. So we know that by connecting people to nature, we can help drive the change needed to restore the world. So art and conservation. Um, I really like this comment, uh, it's one that's shared by our CEO Leslie Dickey and in fact um, this is a picture of her office that was decorated by one of the artists from Go Wild Gorillas and you can even spot a little micro gorilla in the, uh, in, in the office there um, and it's really about um, the fact that conservation and art, um, it's, it's about, it's it really shows in our vision of, of, of how um, combining these two elements um, we thought would be really successful. But of course, when you have great ideas, sometimes it's really good um, to go to the experts. And our project, Go Wild Gorillas, was only made possible by Wild and Art. They are have been doing these um, 
trails, um, art trails with, with sculptures um, for over 10 years. And um, even I think um, um, before technology had advanced as much as it has today. And, um, and they were, were able to give us a really comprehensive um, information and experience on what has worked on previous trails and what hasn't. They also had experience of this, um, of these, how people could fundraise through them, as well as how to engage more people. So we were really, um, really lucky to have Wild and Art as our partners for this project. Um, you may have, uh, if you're in the UK, have seen um, other projects, other wild in art trails that include uh, the bees in Manchester, uh, bears in, in Birmingham, as well as um, various Scottish trails. So it's a really um, fantastic organisation to work with and they really help to guide us and, um, and for us to be able to really learn and compare from other art trails. So... For us, uh, for our 60th anniversary, we chose the sculpture Gorillas. So why did we choose the sculpture Gorillas? One, um, we thought it was a fantastic um, sculpture that would engage um, the community of artists. It's our 60th anniversary. And in fact, um, Jersey Zoo has had gorillas and Jersey has had gorillas for, for, for 60 years. So it seems like the perfect um, sculpture and animal to celebrate. Um, Go Wild Gorillas was also um, a, a way for us to really um, put forward our strategy and connect people to nature, get people out exploring the island and also uh, we conducted surveys which enabled people, it, um, for us to contribute to the one million people better connected to nature. We also here in Jersey have had, I mentioned before, um, the gorilla home where the gorillas live was built in the 1980s, so almost 40 years old. And we had a huge capital project investment that was needed. Um, so um, Go Wild Gorillas was really an idea of bringing all of these things together to celebrate our 60th anniversary and um, to really bring the community together as well as all the visitors to Jersey. So, with any good project, you need an amazing team. I'm very lucky to have um, some incredible people that um, were already employees at Durrell, but also some, some individuals that were brought specifically on for some, some, some of the roles that we, we needed. Um, and together, um, we, we learned so much. Um, it was really important that we, that we met regularly and we identified um, individual strengths. Um, so some of the people that we actually brought on for this project was Will, our artist coordinator, who is a local artist and had connections and um, has been fantastic. And Anna Shipley, who um, worked for the youth service and was helpful, helpful to engage our communities. Um, the rest of the team were already established at Doral and were given specific roles for, for the project. So with any good uh, project, we needed a, a timeline and um, our trail um, was really curated over quite a long period of time. In fact, the planning started before I started at Durrell um, and, um, and still continues now because we are still learning from the project as well as um, engaging with those people who have bought um, gorillas at auction. So um, first, um, the public were probably aware of, of Go Wild Gorillas was in September. Um, and that was when we first started to go out and search for sponsors. The number of sponsors that we were able to engage is, um, was would decide how many gorillas we had in Jersey. So it was a really important stage for us. We developed um, branding um, and um, uh, special presentations to go out and really talk to those support um, to those sponsors that we're, we're already close to us and our supporters and stakeholders um, and to also engage new ones. Um, as part of this project we also had um, schools and community groups so we put um, engagement packages together because we knew that to get engaged schools we would have to go ahead of the school year. Um, we needed artists to design each of the gorillas and, um, and then we also needed time to paint 
and um, before we even got the gorillas out on trail. Um, and we had decided exactly when we wanted the trails to happen. It's quite a long trail for Wild in Arts um, terms, and that's because we wanted it really to run all the way from the start of the school holidays through um, to that to that autumn um, half term. And um, and then we also chose um, a date for our auction um, and a celebration weekend at um, the zoo for, 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 for the gorillas during that half term. So um, I mentioned before that not only did we have these large gorillas that we were going to pop around the island, it was really important to us to engage the local community for this to be successful and we knew that this was something that Wild and Art had done before. So we had a series of um, schools take part and decorate small gorillas and we also had um, various charities. This is um, Lesney um, decorating their gorilla and in fact you might just see the same gorilla just behind me here. Um, so, um, so we had lots of engagement from schools and it was just a really important element because it meant that we were also um, using our education team here to be able to go out and talk about gorillas but also talk about nature connection and get children and families excited about the trail that would be launched in the, in the summer. So Gorilla sponsors. We had a huge um, number of introductions, new new um, new organisations to us, but also uh, a number of organisations that have always supported or are dedicated to, to helping. They um, there was a number of options for us open. We had some headline sponsors, so Quilt Cubiet and Citibank came on board uh, as our community. Uh, Quilter was our main sponsors. And then we also realised that there was a number of things throughout the trail that we would need. And um, all of those highlighted in blue are value and kind sponsors. So we're either able to provide um, services or, um, or support in some way. Um, Bailiwick we had on board as our press partner, so it was really important to us to be able to get the message out and across the island. So, uh, in total, um, this was how the project um, was, um, was reached. Uh, we had 41 sponsors, we commissioned 40 artists, some artists um, painted two gorillas. Um, we also had some artists um, paint some small gorillas as well as the large gorillas on trail. We had 21 schools take part in the island um, with a total of 27 gorilla sculptures and we also had 16 community groups um, and charities take part and um, so really all set up for our trail which was 40 uh, large silverback gorillas and 45 young gorillas. So in total we knew we would have a very successful trail with 85 gorillas in total. So um, being project managers, um, obviously we needed to consider what the risks were of, um, of, of, the, of taking part in this project. So there was a number of uh, risks, not only the tide coming in on, on that gorilla that you see there, um, it was actually um, some of the vital things were the fact that um, we really needed to make sure that we had the right number of sponsors and schools engaged to be able to um, have, a, have a successful trail. Um, and we also needed to manage all those relationships and those expectations and the communication that's involved. With such a large number, it was really important that we, um, that we were able to provide really good service. Um, locations across the island, um, it was really important to us that um, we were really getting people out exploring those wild places, um, but also that we had um, we were brightening up um, areas of town and other areas. So, in fact, it was quite important for us to choose um, the gorilla to complement the location and that the location was accessible, um, that it was uh, across the island, um, that there were plenty of locations in town. And also we had to decide um, um, fairly which sponsors gorillas were going in different locations. Um, gorilla logistics, um, this was around the time where, where we're in 2019 where we um, 
and 2018 when we were planning where we really didn't know when Brexit was going to happen. So, um, in fact, just trying to get the, um, the gorillas on island and to purchase them just before any restrictions came in um, was really important to us. Um, so we had to have them shipped. Um, they were created and manufactured in Poland. Uh, we had to put the order in before we knew how many sponsors we were, we were going to have. So it was really um it was really sort of a, a, a leap of faith um but also um knowing what uh, people's reaction was when we were when we were going and speaking to them um technology was a big risk factor um as part of the trail we had a app um we weren't aware of any sort of um similar apps that had been tested in jersey and in fact we were to discover that there were some issues with um with non-Apple phones um, da downloading um, the app. So we weren't to know that. So we knew that that was a, a risk factor. Um, we also were concerned about the public response. Uh, we didn't want this to be felt that people was a PR stunt. Um, we really wanted people to, to know that there was a community um, um, project, that it was about um, people getting outside and exploring it. Um, you know, we also had to think about the potential damage um, with uh, with our trail being actually extended a bit longer we really um, wanted people to feel that they had some ownership and some protection over the over the sculptures which um, which we did actually have a phenomenal response we were really lucky lucky about that um, also throughout the trail from the launch uh, we needed to make sure that we were maintaining some momentum so our comms team really achieved that by having different themed weeks um, as part of our social media campaign making sure um, that different um, sculptures were, were highlighted during different times um, so that so that was really um, positive and also um, this is quite a different way of fundraising so we really wanted um, to have options for people to make donations as they went on um, we had some small uh, porcelain gorillas that people bought and they could decorate and um, we'd actually increase the price of that to increase the donation so it was just trying to be aware of all the different risk factors um, of coordinating the project Right, so that should give you uh, an idea of a, of a, a bit of the gorillas going out across Jersey and we're really so grateful to our partners Rock who were always at the rescue um, and and you know I think actually all of the partners who took part in it really really enjoyed being part of the trail and the excitement and so um, this is our trail map um, and which shows all the different destinations of the different gorillas. Um, the large gorillas were all in public spaces and all the small gorillas were put into shop windows. Um, and what was absolutely fantastic about this trail is that we were able to track how successful um, the, the trail was and how, how people were engaging through, through the app. Each gorilla had a little code on it, so as people um, were going around and collecting the gorillas, they would unlock a code and sometimes these would actually um, also display a discount or a prize or, or an award um, that was linked to the sponsor of of that gorilla. So um, we had 40,000 maps distributed across the island. We put them in hotels, they were at tourism, um, the schools took them up um, and people could actually physically tick off all of the different gorillas on the other side of this trail map. And we were delighted to have 220,000 unlocks. So that's the number of unlocks of the gorillas, um, people who were taking part in the um, in the search in the app over the course of the trail so it was really fantastic to have that so um we were also really incredible for us to really look at some comparing our statistics to, to, to other trails as part of the wild in arts and to really see um, compared to, to the population, um, how successful we were being. Um, and really, you can see there that, um, that um, for the population of, of, of just over 100,000, we were in the first 40 days really racking up the unlocks on the, uh, on, on the app. Uh, and that just gave us really good momentum to know that we had really good engagement and that what we were doing was right, that we were reaching the right people and that, that people were really enjoying um, taking part. 
And the best thing about the trail is the pictures that we were getting back. Um, people were really smiling. They were people were really engaging it. There were different groups and, and um, going out and um, and using it as part of their corporate engagements. There were people running between um, gorillas. There were children um, sending in photos and having photos. So it was really fantastic. Um, as well as that, we also had um, huge visitor numbers to Jersey Zoo. Um, although none of the gorillas were behind pay gates that were accessible uh, 24 hours a day, um, we did have a, a gorilla up here and we did see that, that Jersey Zoo visitors had increased, which was fantastic. So, the all important gorilla auction. So, all of our um, planning had led up to um, the gorilla auction. Um, um, and um, we we felt that this actually, on reflection, was was a, was fantastic. We had um, one of our sponsors, Royal Yacht, who hosted it. Um, we had a limited number of people who were able to access the auction. We had also investigated um, other uh, other wild and art trails, and we had found um, this incredible auctioneer, Charles Hansen. Um, who, who, um, who, had, uh, who had successfully auctioned um, the bees and had um, broken a record to, to raise over a million pounds at that, at that auction. Um, and for us, um, really, the bidding um, for, for these gorillas at auction was vital to the, to the success. And also, we knew that um, it would go, contribute towards the funding for the new gorilla house. Um, so this was Ding Dong was the first um, gorilla to be auctioned, and um, it was the most phenomenal atmosphere I can say. I was actually on the phone to a bidder um, who wanted to bid on four gorillas, um, and at the end of this incredible evening, we were super lucky to have to know um, that we actually for. 40 gorillas, this is the team here, we had raised over a million pounds, um, which actually broke um, Wild and Art records. We sold one gorilla for um, 72,000 um, pounds, a gorilla that was done um, by our local sand man, Andy. Um, and actually it was one of the last gorillas to, to, to be taken by one of the sponsors. So it was actually really phenomenal to get such an incredible response. And obviously that means um, that it would be going towards our gorilla family. So this is our family of gorillas. And whilst, uh, when we went into the auction for the gorilla, for the gorillas at the culmination of, of this project. Um, we had four gorillas, but actually within a few weeks, uh, we were very lucky to have um, a new baby born. And this is Lisa Lamari. Um, so um, as well as Jersey going wild for gorillas during 2019, um, there was a very important purpose for, um, for our gorilla family needing a new home and uh, why it was so important for us to, to get that funding um, for the new Gorilla House. So the culmination of, um, of the project is going to be a new home for the Gorillas. Um, we're delighted to say um, that um, we've also had some match funding um, be um, um, unsuspected, come out of um, Alco Wild Gorillas. And I really do think this is to do with, with the high profile that the Gorillas had in Jersey, the success of the auction and the relationships that we formed with all of those sponsors over that period of time. Um, in this picture, you can see um, the old home, which is, which is this green building to the left side, and then this model for the new home. Um, it is really going to change um, the, the well-being, not only for the Gorillas, but also for the keepers. Um, um, the outside area is absolutely fantastic for gorillas and um, if anyone in the UK um, does remember um, our famous male seal for that jambo um, where this enclosure where, where a young boy fell in, um, that outside enclosure is fantastic um, and our gorillas here are gentle giants and um, and we're really excited to be able to, to go towards giving them a new home. Uh, and really the culmination of, of, of the whole project is, is just been phenomenal to know that 
to know that 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 is really um, the future for for gorillas um, and all all that we've learned through the trail. We are also um, considering another trail, but just in the meantime, I wanted to just speak to you quickly about a new project which we are using some of the learnings from Go Wild Gorillas, the the learns that we learned as a team, um, to to look at the future for. So. Um, our, um, I spoke at the beginning about um, how important uh, nature connection is. Um, our education team have been um, doing a lot of research and, and, and one of the clearest research shown is that young children are very connected to nature but actually during teenage years children tend to go through a dip in the nature connection. And what we want to do is to re-engage young people, especially teenagers in Jersey and around the world in, in nature. And um, our education team have looked at a, a project called My Nature Watch. Um, and we are going to be launching this. It's a project that's been run in, in combination previously. Um, I think they've had it in um, in various different um, at colleges and universities. You might have seen it on Springwatch, Wildlife Trust have used it. They've had it in the Design Museum. So we are actually going to roll this out locally um, to local schools. Um, it is a DOI camera um, and uh, enables you to actually um, be able to um, take nature pictures um, on with a sensor camera. And we're hoping that it will um, really, um, we're going to look at this project in a similar way that we did for Go Wild Gorilla. So we're talking about nature connection, we're talking about engaging with, with young people, and we're going to use some of those skills that we learned about social, the power of social media, technology, working in collaboration, communicating with our schools and community groups to really set up this timeline. Um, so at the moment we are about to launch to schools, um, but in the summer we hope to have a, 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 a um, to go out to actually for all people to take part, as well as um, community groups and um, summer projects. And um, we hope to actually culminate in a, in a trail um, using the similar purposes that our um, community um, events um, use, which was to um, to use window displays and um, and also um, to um, to, um, to to actually have a community um, event. We also hope that this is going to be rolled out. So it's not just um, for, for, the, for this year, but also we hope to, that it will go out to our UK and global rewilding sites. So it's something that we can re repeat. Um, and as I said, we're going to use quite a lot of the skills that we learned. So we hope to have projections. Um, we hope that it will be a celebration event and um, that we can, we, can, um, we can apply some of the learnings which we had during Go Wild Gorillas. And these are all our rewilding sites. So um, we are going to start in Jersey and then next year we are going to hopefully have it in the UK near uh, Nepa State where we have a wild stork project and we have some links to school. And then we hope to actually um, each year roll it out to our other projects around the world. So this is really creating our own project that we can that we can share. And um, it's going to be renamed as Wild Snap. We realised that if we're going to engage young people, we really needed to think about what the, what's of interest to them. So we're actually looking at, um, at how this is going to be seen on social media and um, that's going to play a huge part for us. So our designer, Rich, who did, did all of our design work for Go Wild Gorillas, has put this together and we are just about to roll it out to schools and um, looking at the moment for uh, corporate partners and, and in the same way that we had done for Go Wild Gorillas. So um, that brings me to the end of um, the presentation and I just uh, want to share something that our um, just to say thank you and, and, and just to really reiterate that that the most important thing for us is that um, we do connect people to nature because when you connect people to nature, um, you really, you really want to save, um, um, the, you know, the wildlife. And, and at the moment, after going through such a difficult time with COVID, um, I think it's really shown how important nature is to all of our well-being. 
and how important it is that we can make changes in our lifestyle and, and um, changes um, in the world around us just just by um, being part of, uh, of, 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 of our charity and, and taking part in our projects. So thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to stop the web show. Excellent. Great, thank great. you. I can see you again. Thank you very much, Beth. That was that was fantastic. So we've got a few questions that have, have come up. So the first one is, what projects do Durrell have planned for this year and next year? So uh, 2021 is, is a really um, big year for us. I mean, we were we we were really really lucky that our 60th anniversary landed in 2019 and not 2020 um so you know this go wild gorilla project just wouldn't have been possible during during the experience and, and we, we we are incredibly lucky and, and feel sorry for people who have had to experience such turmoil um this year for us is really um about focusing on actually um launching a new website and membership program for our um, supporters um, so really looking at, at that technology element um, and how we build the foundations of uh, of our supporter services and our fundraising um, my nature watch is a fantastic project for our education team it's not so much as a fundraising project but we hope that actually it will engage people with our cause and our mission and our vision um, and that's really important the more people we can get to understand the work that we're doing and supporting um, us as a charity the better so um, so yeah 2021 is exciting um and um we're looking forward to it um and um you know we're excited to have people join us and and, and share share that 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 vision as well fantastic thank you so we've got a question from charlotte which was this project's got conservation at its heart and um, so what environmental considerations were thought at about during the, the project and well, do you have any suggestions for other projects around their uh, environmental uh, concerns? Yeah. So, yeah, so it's really important as a conservation organisation that we actually think about the impact of, of, of any of our um, projects. And what was fantastic about this was it was so technology based that we didn't actually have to do a lot of classic printing or that sort of advertising that we did. In fact, although I said we distributed those leaflets, that was really the only printed material that we used. Um, the trail we really try to encourage people to um, commute um, using bikes or walk between um, different different gorillas that were across the island we engaged with the bus um, service to be able to kind of um, advertise and promote people using the bus as well to go and access it um, in fact a lot of the gorillas that were created were, were have stayed on island which is which surprised us really um, but but most of them have um, and we're also really excitingly as Darrell as an organization about to launch a um, rewild carbon project um, so we're actually looking at some of the work which we do ha and have been doing in Brazil for many many years uh, where we've been planting um, trees and corridors to build up the ecosystems um, because there's a special little monkey that we have been trying to save for many years called the black lion tamarind and um, due to deforestation, their habitat has been destroyed. Um, so we actually realized that we, with our partners, Ipe in Brazil, have been planting trees and have been reforesting. And what we're really excited to do is actually give our supporters an opportunity um, to, to, to offset their carbon through this tree planting project, which is actually uh, not only just about planting carbon sticks or a monoculture of, of, of forest, but really about the ecosystem that lives in there. So over 120 species of, of, of plants and trees and um, and a forest rich in biodiversity. And um, and that's really exciting for us and, and, and certainly also another focus for us this year. Oh, it does sound really exciting. Excellent. Cool. Um, okay, so we've got another question from Samuel, which was um, the campaign and the project had many aspects. What aspect do you believe 
contributed the most to making it a successful project and achieving your goals? I think the biggest thing was collaboration between and really inviting people to be part of the project as well. So we had all these sponsors um, who had invested in a gorilla, had chosen the design for their own gorilla. Um, they um, were invited to engage their 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 their, um, their clients, but also their staff teams. We had um, community engagement, so we went out to all the schools, and we invited all different charities to have their own little gorilla. Um, internally, as a team, we really worked together. We worked with our education team. We worked with we we, we met regularly. Um, we um, we really saw this as a very linked together campaign um, at, across our social media channels, across our um, supporters. So not only just corporates, but we had individual. Um, members of Doral, um, as well as our major donors, so people who, who are philanthropists who give to, 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 to Doral, they were very engaged with the project. And obviously, we also had the opportunity to, um, to get people outside during the summer and to having fun and to, to make this a really fun project, very colourful and, and, and sticking to our, to our vision and our mission. So I think bringing that all together, being really true to our integrity, um, to, 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 to our strategy and, and um, seeing it through that lens um, was really important. Um, and I think also just having a very clear message, 60 years of Gorilla in Jersey for our 60th anniversary to build a new Gorilla house, a very clear message um, for any fundraising message. So that was really good. Okay, great. And so last question from um, Ashok, which is, um, how do you come up with your ideas? There's some great ideas in there. Um, so did you use brainstorming? Was it reusing ideas that you'd seen work well elsewhere? How, how did you come up with, with those great ideas? Yeah, I think I think what's really important is that when you have that kind of mixed team coming together with different people and different experiences within your team. So, you know, we had not only our graphic designer, but we had external people coming in, different uh, our artist um, liaison manager, um, community manager, and really see people from different perspectives. Some people have children, some people don't have children. Um, you know, just having all of those different options. Um, and really when it comes to ideas, I think, when we are a really creative and, and passionate group of, of individuals we're really striving um, um, for our, our uh, and believe in our mission of, of, of um, rewilding and and of, of saving species from extinction having a really clear strategy and really clear goals defined goals that we're all working towards it's also really helpful, not only just for us as a team, but for our supporters and for our investors and for all of our partners. Um, so really, I think it can be really easy to get really creative and go really wild and kind of come up with lots of different ideas. But you have to think about what is achievable in the resources that you have and with the capacity that you have. And if you combine that and, and still remain ambitious and driven, then I think it's a winning combination. Fantastic. So we've had one late question come in, which is what was your favourite design? Ah, <laughs> so I had lots of different favorite designs um but i think the one that was really special was the distance between us which was designed by andy coutange the sandman um, i mentioned in my presentation that it was the last um gorilla to actually be um to actually go to, to, to actually um be put through from the design to the actually being created in a gorilla and there were some people who challenged us on it, even um, the Wild and Art team said, oh, maybe um, the structure of it might not be stable. Um, but actually, we, we believed in the artist and we believed in this being a really unique design. Um, it was placed at um, a really iconic spot at El Tico in St. Juan's Bay. Um, it was uh, photographed in lots of different ways. And of course, um, at auction, it achieved the highest bid. And I think, it's that idea that you can sometimes people will see a design in 2D and not quite understand um, how that's going to look um, when it when it's actually been created. 
Um, but actually, when I went into the sponsors Deloitte to, 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 to show what designs were left, I really um, impressed on how important it was. And um, Martin there, he actually completely agreed with me and could see that that um, that vision for what it could look like. And so um, for me, it's my favourite design because it raised the most amount of funds, but also because it was almost uh, the one that got away and, and wasn't created. So um, definitely has a special place um, for us and, 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 um, and for all at Durrell. Fantastic, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Beth. That was, that was a really engaging uh, presentation. Thanks for, for sharing that with us. And thank you for everyone that joined the, the webinar. And um, we'll close the webinar down. And yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.